here to welcome you to the 18th annual Bioinformatics Open Source Conference, BOSC 2017. If this is, thank you, thank you. <laughs> if this is not the session you intended to go to, now is your chance to quietly sneak out of the room when no one's looking. So BOSC is organized by the Open Bioinformatics Foundation, uh, and our president, Hilmar Lapp, is right there. He's going to be talking right after my introductory remarks. Um, we encourage everyone to apply for membership. It's free. It's linked from our website, openbio.org. And you'll also have a chance to meet some of the people who run OBF at our Welcome to Bosk Birds of a Feather session, which I'll say more about later. Uh, just before I go any further, some people ask, why is your hashtag Bosch 2017 rather than just Boss 17? Uh, we've actually had a surprising number of debates about this. The, there's a simple answer, which is that it's not the 17th BOSC, it's the 18th, because we started in 2000. So if we had only had the foresight to wait until 2001, the numbers would have lined up perfectly, but we didn't. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm the chair. I could not have done this organizing without all the help from my great committee, my co-chair here, Heather, in the front row, she's going to wave, and the rest of the organizing committee, uh, all of whom are here at the conference except for Chris Fields, who unfortunately couldn't make it uh, due to funding issues. And I also would like to thank the program committee who reviewed abstracts. The, I uh, don't have time to read them all, but very grateful for their help. The ones with the stars also reviewed the late-breaking lightning talk abstracts uh, in that second round. And I also wanted to give a shout out to Brad Chapman, who organizes the great uh, Code Fest before each of the BOSCs, and he's going to be talking to you uh, really soon, uh, telling you about this year's Code Fest. And I'd like to thank the uh, organizations that sponsor us, that give money to help underwrite our costs and enable us to give free registration to some people who would otherwise be unable to attend. These are eLife, The Hive, Mozilla Science Lab, Repositive, Seven Bridges, and GigaScience. Many of these are new sponsors this year, so we welcome them. Uh, these are all linked from our website, so you can look at, at what they're up to. And I think uh, almost all of them have representatives here, so look for them, thank them, talk to them about what they're doing. Uh, boring but important if you're not already on the wireless. The network is ISMB ECCB, the password all caps, PROG17. The best source of information about what's happening here at BOSC is on our website at our schedule. And you don't have to type in that URL. If you Google BOSC 2017 schedule, we come up as the first hit. Um, if you're not already following us on Twitter, we're at OBF underscore BOSC. And as I mentioned, the hashtag is BOSC 2017. There's a mailing list that we use very infrequently for BOSC announcements, uh, such as opening the call for abstracts. Um, it's carefully uh, spam filtered, so you won't get any spam on it. So feel free to sign up for that. That's linked from our website. And you can also email the organizing committee at BOSC at openbio.org. That list actually gets a lot of spam that we have to filter. So if you don't hear from us right away, we might have missed your question or comment. So then try tweeting us. So this year, ISMB is video recording all of the talks. Um, and the presenters signed an agreement when they submitted their abstracts to either be video recorded or to opt out. If you changed your mind, decided you don't want to be recorded, or you said no and now you want to, just let us know. Um, talk to me or Heather, or, um, and we'll We'll do that. Um, we are not going to video the, the Q&A sessions. And if the, if the video is on, we'll, we'll just trim those out before those videos are shared so that everyone can feel free to ask and answer questions without worrying about being recorded. And we will link the videos to our website after the meeting. So most of the longer talks are 15 minutes with three minutes at the end for questions. You'll see that there are some groups of related talks where the timing varies, but this is for most of them. And the lightning talks are five minutes, and in order to keep those moving smoothly, instead of having questions after each one, we have a series of several lightning talks and then a short period for questions for any of the authors uh, of those lightning talks. 
Um, and the, the session chair will hold up a warning sign to let the speakers know when they only have a few minutes left. So if you're the speaker, if you just nod to them so they know that you saw the sign. Uh, I think all of you who are speaking in this morning's workflows session have already copied your slides to the podium uh, laptop here. If you're speaking in a, a later session, just try to come up here and copy your slides so that we can keep everything moving on time. And uh, we'll talk more about this later, but we encourage people to share their slides or poster abstracts on our F1000 channel. So I mentioned questions and answers. We, we actually provide four ways that you can ask questions after a talk. The, uh, there's microphones here, so you can do the usual coming up to the microphone. We will also pass out index cards where you can write your question if you prefer to do it that way, and we'll have volunteers picking those up and bringing them to the chair. You can also tweet your question if you do that. Use the hashtags BOSS2017 and also Q4S, question for speaker, to help us be able to find those quickly. And finally, if you don't get a chance to ask your question, you can find the speaker at the next break. This is particularly useful for the lightning talks where they don't have very much time to talk or to answer questions. The uh, official poster sessions are both days at 6 p.m. and it's through the exhibition area. You can check online to see if you're presenting a poster, if you are odd or even. ISMB requests that the presenters of the odd number posters present today and even tomorrow. However, if that doesn't work for your schedule, go ahead and do it the other way. They're not going to be rigorously checking. Um, if you didn't get a chance to set up your poster yet, please go and do that during lunch. And ISMB would like everyone to take down their poster right after the last poster session because they need to set up for the next two days of the conference. And uh, Bastian and Karsten, who are sitting right here, these two blonde guys, uh, are the poster organizers. So if you have any uh, organizational questions about posters, check with them. Birds of a feather sessions are always one of the highlights of BOSC. These are self-organizing groups around a common interest for people to talk about how they might be able to work together, maybe collaborate, and the first buff that we're having today at over lunchtime is the Common Workflow Language Community Meetup. And this one actually is one of our success stories for Birds of a Feather at BOSC. Uh, they got together in 2014 as a group that was interested in talking about standards for representing workflows. And it then took off as a project. There'll be several talks this morning that talk about Common Workflow Language. Um, so if you're interested in that, there's, there's that Birds of a Feather. And then there will, there's two others also at lunchtime, Future of BioJS and the Welcome to Bosque, uh, Birds of a Feather, to welcome both new and returning uh, people here. Um, and I'll talk a little more about the Birds of a Feather right before they happen, right before lunch. Uh, but there are also other times to do them today, right at the end of the talks at 5.30, and then tomorrow also over lunch and at 5.30. And feel free to organize your own BOF. And uh, here's a, a shorthand link for it. It's also linked from our schedule. So the last few years, we've had a loose sort of theme for BOSC, uh, which the, the panel then uh, gives an opportunity to discuss that topic. This year's topic we chose is open data. And you may have seen this, this really cool artwork, which was done by a digital artist, Greg Helt, um, who was inspired by the open data theme to, you, to make this fractal-based artwork called Data Plumbing. Uh, if you recognize Greg's name, it's because he was a leader in bioinformatics before he switched to doing mostly art. So the, uh, I mentioned the panel is going to be about open data. The title is uh, Standards, Opportunities, and Challenges, which has a great acronym ODSOC. So there's some odd socks up there. Um, and the chair will be Moni, who's right over here. And we, uh, the panelists will include our two keynote speakers, as well as two other great panelists. So that's tomorrow at 3 PM, so don't miss that. And speaking of our keynote speakers, we have uh, Madeline Ball from the Open Humans Foundation will speak today at 4.30 about open sourcing ourselves. And Nick Lohman will close out the conference tomorrow at 4.30 with his talk. So both of these are open data experts, and so that ties into our theme this year. So 
it seemed to me that open data is more important than ever, especially with some of the governments wanting to suppress information and hide data that doesn't match what they want people to think. So, you know, I think we all share an interest in getting open data out there and some of the topics that might come up during the meeting include standards for sharing open data, how to make this data findable, queryable, uh, how to encode the metadata and provenance, which is especially important for ensuring the quality and trustability because you need to know where data came from to know whether it's trustable, how to give appropriate credit to those who share their data, and then some of the concerns that come up, especially privacy around human data. Um, and this is cut off a tiny bit, but the FAIR data principles have been developed. Uh, FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, so we may hear about those from, from some of the speakers. So this quote uh, was given to me by Madeline Ball. It was from one of the participants who was sharing their data in the Open Humans uh, study. It's like donating my body to research, but I don't have to die. So I think we can all agree that's a good thing. Um, before I go any further, I don't want to distract from BOSS 2017, but some of you may have heard rumors that uh, we have a different partner next year. So after many years of being part of ISMB, we are trying an experiment next year to see if we can reach new audiences, maybe lower some of the costs for attendees. So we are trying a partnership with the Galaxy Community Conference. I know a lot of Galaxy people are here, and we're excited to, to try this with them in Portland next June. Um, so we're, this is a one-time thing. This is not goodbye forever. Um, but I hope that um, those of you who can will join us in 2018. Now back to the present. Uh, when I hand over the mic, uh, Helmar Lapp is going to talk a little bit about the Open Bioinformatics Foundation. And then Kai Blinn, uh, who led the OBF group in the Google Summer of Code, will tell us about how that went in uh, 2016 and how it's going in 2017. And then Brad Chapman is going to tell us about the awesome Code Fest that they just finished yesterday. And Brad will then become the chair of the next session, which is about workflows. So once again, acknowledging our sponsors and thanking them. And thank you all for coming. And we're excited to have you here at BOSC.